You're putting together a slide presentation for class. You've done some web searching to find images, and using any of them would likely be considered fair use in that limited face-to-face -face context. But what about sharing them on a website or using them in a video that you publish to YouTube? Under these circumstances, claiming fair use is much more complicated, and you probably have other things to worry about. You can get around this issue by limiting your image search to images that are licensed under Creative Commons. Creative Commons licensing allows the creators of original works to grant permission that these works be used under certain conditions, for example, that the person using it include an attribution to credit the originator. There are dozens of sources for Creative Commons licensed photos, but Flickr.com, established in 2004, is one of the largest. Flickr's internal search engine allows you to limit searches to Creative Commons licensed content and, further, content that's licensed to be freely modified and even used commercially. So Flickr is a go-to resource for finding images that you can use in your presentations. However, as useful as its internal search engine is, it's still not easy to copy attribution information or to collect and organize photos. Fortunately, Flickr allows anyone with the requisite coding experience to pull its image data into third-party websites and apps. Flickrcc.net, developed by Peter Shanks, is an easy-to-use tool for locating Creative Commons licensed content on Flickr. Flickrcc makes searching, browsing, downloading, and even editing Flickr photos very convenient. However, there's still a problem to be solved if you're searching for more than a few images how to organize all of them along with their attributions. While browsing images in Flickr CC, you'll notice a Pin It button, which links to the third and final service we'll consider, Pinterest.com. Pinterest is designed for sharing and organizing interesting images, web pages, and other content that you find on the web. To use Pinterest, you'll first need to create an account. As with more and more web services, you also have the option to log in using an existing Facebook or Twitter account. I'd simply recommend using the option below those to sign up with your email address, so that you don't have to think about whether everything you pin is going to show up in the feeds for these other accounts. Once you've created your Pinterest account, you'll notice that you have the option to create pins and boards. Pins are simply visually appealing bookmarks. Boards are thematic collections of pins. If you know that you'll be reusing pins, that is images, in other presentations, you could create a board for commonly used images. Pins can be repinned into multiple boards, so you could also categorize them by presentation topic, subtopic, whatever scheme works well for your purposes.